Hey, look, it's still here. Yes. <laughs> High five. That is some stupid, really fun information to find. Welcome everybody to From the Source again. I have Joe Medley with me today. Uh, if you don't know who he is, I'd go look it up. Uh, you have definitely read content that he has output before. He is a writer extraordinaire. His his fingerprints all are all over the web. And today we are looking at the Chrome user agent. So the user agent is a style sheet that you get on your web page, no matter if you ask for it or not. And it's applying all the default stuff like the padding on your uh, your paragraphs and some other stuff. And so I was intrigued by like. What is Chrome's? I've never actually read it before. And why are we using resets? Because resets and normalize like these used to be uh, really popular in my, my tool belt and I don't use them anymore. So I'm kind of curious, what, what do I even want to overwrite or what am I getting and what other kind of random stuff is in this file? I'm just gonna switch over to the file now and we're gonna check it out. Joe, you wanna say hi? Um, yeah, hi guys. And uh, you, know what, you know what worries me about this? No. The, uh, so I guarantee that you are going to come come across some basic thing that I should have known for years and <laughs> didn't, and it's going to be it's going to be all over the internet. This is why I'm doing it too. Okay. I want it to look really innocent. Like, hey, yeah. sure, we work at Google, we work on this stuff all day, but that does not make us super geniuses that somehow know the niche, uh, you know, corners of every cranny of the internet. So. That's what's fun about this. We're just going to go to this open source page. So here we are uh, down in the source. We've got the chromium.googlesource.com slash chromium slash blink slash master slash source blah 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 all the way to html.css and this is Chrome's user agent. I also have the other ones pulled up here from Mozilla and Safari. We might cross check those as we go but today we're going to stick through Chrome's. Um, yeah, I mean right off the bat I'm like what is at namespace? I mean, I can guess from HTML land what that's trying to, to say, uh, but why are we why are we still running an, an XHTML namespace? I thought that uh, I thought that died when uh, HTML5 came out. Yeah, I haven't used any of those in a long time. Uh, anyway, I, that I'm willing to skip over right now because I have a feeling that that is just the tip of an iceberg of like history that <laughs> that n nobody's evaluated this in 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 five or eight years and uh, yep. And we probably need to open some uh, some bugs on uh, on Bugonizer. I think so. Yeah, I liked this area too because look at all these things that get set to display none. Uh, I mean, my, my brain first wanted to go like, why are they all separate? Why don't you just make a little comma you know selector list and then set display none once? But who knows? I don't know why. I <laughs> That's actually kind of frightening. So I could actually uh, if I set a custom uh, user style sheet, I could presumably view the head of every web page that I downloaded from the <gasps> internet. Yeah, let's try it. So wait, if we go to, wait, I could try it on this web page. So if I go here and I pop open elements and I just make a new rule uh, in here, we'll shrink that, bring this up. If I make a new rule that says a uh, head display block important, did I just get a whole bunch of stuff from the top of the document? I didn't. So if I select the here is the element. It has nodes. Oh, its children are probably um, all hidden as well. So we'll say head uh, everything inside of there as well. Aha! Now uh -huh. we got one thing. <laughs> we get the name of the CSS file and the. Uh, what did we get? We got a rel. Oh, we got a a title. Oh, our title element was rendered now. And it's only. Uh, hmm. Interesting. That is interesting. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> random. So only, stuff. only, uh, so only text nodes. Only text nodes. Oh yeah, because the script tags and stuff. How would you display those? You wouldn't. You wouldn't. And those, yeah, script nodes and stuff. I see those when I'm crawling DOM, like especially as people are putting more and more like styles in line, and they have like anyway. Um, okay. Cool. Interesting. Right. So we have the meta is set to display none, title, link, style, script. Okay. These are just like what we're talking about. So I think if these are, aren't are set to display none, they just consume a default amount of space, like if they're display inline. Because display inline is the, that's the default display type of everything, right? Anyway. You're the CSS expert. I'm, <laughs> I'm supposed to know that. Yeah. Pause, let me go Google, just kidding. All right, let's. I, I've been at this web thing for a couple of decades now, so it's to me it's like, what uh, what's the default this week? <laughs> that makes sense. Hey look. They're missing a semicolon. Oops. 
There isn't another See, one. I told you we, we Actually, had to open a ticket somewhere along the way. What the heck is going on here? Can you do CSS like this without a semicolon? Um, if you can't now, I'll bet you could at some point. Whoa. All right, I'm about to go take all the semicolons out of my CSS, just like my JavaScript. Well, that'll um, make so many actually, people upset. I think it, you know what? Actually, it's uh, I think it's the last one does not have to have a semicolon, if oh. memory serves. And uh, so oh, Div and Layer have only have one, so they would not have one at all. Crazy. And look at this, but these ones are treated a little different. We have a semicolon here, but not here. Marquee, that's funny. Oh yeah, layer. Okay, I want to talk about layer really quick okay. because I I was scrolling through and I was like, layer? Is layer a tag? And if I search like HTML layer tag, I found this fascinating thing that was basically showed um, the a layer tag is used to position and animate. So it's like you're, it, we always talk about creating a layer in the GPU, but you could actually use a layer HTML tag. So if you know that you're moving something around and you're just making a wrapper node to be positioned in 3D, this is a cool tag to use. It's like semantically appropriate for the thing that you're doing. And it's ancient. It's from... <laughs> and does it have a, uh, does it have a Z order attribute? Oh, or does yeah. it just, does it just throw everything on top of whatever's on the page. It probably comes with just a default display block. Oh, what did we have in our user agent? Our user agent showed just display block. So it's Z index and it's position. So it's position is going to be static and it's Z index is going to be, uh, so it's just a render order, so DOM order. So I, I don't know, unless there's layer, unless it's present other places in here, that's it. And I would be, I would be curious to know too how it interacts with something like Canvas, which is also meant for for uh, drawing things on screen. Yeah, crazy. So we got the page. Uh, oh, wait, did we not cover this one yet? This is like our previous query. We didn't show it in the, uh, in uh, the style well, sheet itself I'll have to get there because that one was cool. But I liked that the support for the layer tag has been around since Netscape 4. So that's kind of cool. I'm going to start using the layer tag in case you see it in my, my code here. Um, while we just <laughs> we stumbled upon our page because uh, we were like, what is the at page? We found it here and uh, I think it was at the bottom of the document, right? Yeah, so the uh, user agent style sheet that we're just scrolling through and we've only got about 20 lines in so far is 1100 lines or yeah, it's 1123 lines. We checked out the bottom though and we were like, what is at page? And we went and checked it out, and it's a CSS at rule used to modify properties when you're printing a document. So it's kind of like a print media query, but it's an at rule. And I, you know, this started to, this has started to come back to me. I think I knew that that was there because there are there are use cases um, for printing, even though it is the uh, is the internet. You uh, you might want to uh, you might want to print a boarding pass, even though you can do it on your phone. Um, you know, just as a backup, put it in the luggage, and and uh, if the phone decides it's going to quit, yeah. When you're in the waiting area, you've got a backup. I love that. I like that this little quippy statement here is you can only change margins, orphans, and widows, and page breaks. So it's like this page at rule. So and I like that they're even using centimeters and meters in here because those are units in CSS. They just don't have a common use because you're not commonly printing and wanting to specify things right. that way. But this is so cool. Look, a margin, like if we were to use CSS grid, I could say grid gap of one centimeter. That's yes. so cool. Yeah, that is that is cool. Although I, um, uh, no, you're gonna you're gonna cut this bit out. I was gonna say something that's not really relevant to the modern web. <laughs> I, it's kind of not. Although I, the CDS website, we're gonna have a print style sheet for the schedule. Right. Because I'm like, maybe you want to print the schedule out. Yes. And have it in your pocket. I, I started. See, I, I spent a lot of years doing desktop publishing because the that's what you used to do and. Uh, the, uh, so I was going to say something about page bleeds and and and, uh, and how you print and whatever, but that's, that's still, still cool. Page breaks and uh, no, not page breaks. <laughs> um, page bleeds. The way you print all the way to the to the edge of a edge yeah. of a paper. So the the uh, printer has to printer actually printing press too. It has to be able to grab the edge of the the paper at some point, and so you don't print on it. And the the uh, the way they do this in the in the publishing industry is that they have a sheet of paper that's bigger than what they want to do. Right. Uh, what they're going to actually release, and you don't have that. You don't have that advantage on the web, or um, uh, uh, if you're if you're you don't have that 
advantage when you're printing something on your desktop printer. And so even if you make that margin zero, um, a lot of printers will still give you a gap around the edge. Yeah, and that's like bleeds are also for when the paper is shifting, right? Um, and so you'll print a little past the bleed because you'll uh, assume a paper shift and then you're going to assume like a slice. So if I, you really want to go to the edge. So. I guess on a printer, my uh, uh, on a desktop printer, my, my dad ran printing presses and about every, I don't know if it was every thousand sheets or something, he would have to pull one off the line and he'd look at yeah. the, he'd, there's registration lines on it and he'd look at it with a magnifying glass. And if it was if it was off even just a little bit, he'd have to go go twist some knobs or whatever it is. If only he had Visbug for his paper. Right. <laughs> Oh, I guess he had a ruler. He had yeah. better tools. He had a magnifying yeah. glass and a ruler. Uh, that's hilarious. Uh, so anyway, the page uh, at Rule, super fascinating. We went and looked at the support. We were like, what's the support for this? And look, the support is like all the way across the board, but we have a Safari no. So we were like, oh, yeah? Well, let's go look at the WebKit Safari uh, user agent style sheet and look for that page. And look, they're using it. But look, there's a, there's a note in here that says, fix me. But that's, but that's the, uh, you know what, this is, it just hit me. Um, that is the same note that's in the CSS style sheet. Um, our style sheet, I think, is essentially what we inherited from WebKit days. Yeah, we forked off of them. So, hey, look, it's still here. Yes. <laughs> High five. That is some stupid, really fun information to find. I'm, like, really entertained by that. Um, okay. That's interesting because <laughs> the render is, I mean, we've, uh, we've almost purged everything WebKit from, from the Blink but we have, But we have comments. Just, we've been shipping comment gibberish for right. years still. I want to get in the style sheet now and make a CL. Like, I would love to contribute to this, like, slim it up, get rid of some of these, like, I, some consistencies. Like, no, I, there's no semicolon thing. <laughs> It's blowing my mind. I love it. Here, okay. I'll, I'll look it up later. You know what? I <laughs> I I, uh, I haven't seen it in ages. But uh, when I first started working in Chrome DevRel, I would occasionally come across a file in the Chrome code base that still had a uh, still had a WebKit uh, copyright notice oh, at wow. the top of it. Wow. Okay, well, how long are we at? We are at a video of 12 minutes. 12 minutes. I'm going to call us at that video. I think this is bite-sized enough. I'm going to come back to this file. Unless you want to unless you want to cut out all of that irrelevant stuff about the uh, <laughs> about the uh, about printing presses and, and I thought that printers. was awesome. Okay. I like bleed. I'm well, I'm also super into print. I well, like go uh, back go back to uh, go back to uh, MDN page there. Yeah. Look at this. No, go back oh, to the browser there? compatibility. Look yeah. at this bleed descriptor not supported anywhere. You can't even fix that on. Uh, although that might be out of date, here's a big plug for submitting a pull request to yes, uh, yes. to MDN if you find missing compatibility data, which we think we did. So, I mean, that sounds like a great follow-up video. Which is, if we if we believe that Safari does support the at page rule because it's in their user agent style sheet, we could go make a a PR against Actually, MDN and try to I figure could, it out. Um, Flag is incorrect. Or I just you know what? I think we need to flag it as incorrect because this this at rule landed in Chrome two. Chrome two was a web was when we were WebKit. So it unless Safari deliberately took it out, it has to be in Safari still. Cool, cool. All right, so we're gonna go do that. Maybe we'll make a video about how to make PRs and seals to MDN. And. Uh, Joe, I appreciate you being on this episode. Oh, anytime. <laughs> I want to do more of these. I think I thought I was going to get farther into the style sheet because there's fascinating information in there. But hey, I'm happy we got in this far. I think what we've uncovered is is pretty awesome. So, All right. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, Adam. See you guys in the next episode. <laughs>